So let's analyze question number 39. So this seems to be a little complicated question, but actually this is a very easy question to solve. Okay, so let's analyze it together. So you have P, Q, R and S, there are three variables and be distinct positive integers. Okay, and it's given that P and Q be odd numbers, R and S be even numbers. Okay, consider the following statements. There are three statements given and which of the following above statements above are correct. Then there are four statements given. So there are two approaches you could use in these type of questions. Okay, one is you could use the concepts you learned about odd even properties and you can use here. And the second approach is you can plug in values as well. Okay, let's start with the approach number one where we are using the concepts first. So we're using the concept of multiplication, addition, subtraction here of odd even numbers. Okay, let's start with just generalize the, the concept we learned before. Start with multiplication. So let's say if I'm multiplying an odd number, I'm representing it as O. When you multiply by any even number, the result is always even. Okay, E represent even. And if you're multiplying two even numbers, let's say the result is always going to be even. You can take some example. Two times four is eight, which is an even number. And let's say if you're multiplying one odd number with another odd number, let's say three times five, which is 15, which is also an odd number. So this is the first rule. And if you closely analyze these rules, you can identify a pattern here. See, if any one of the term in the product is even, the entire output or the entire product will definitely will be even. Very important rule. See, you can see. See, in this, you can see one of the term is even. That's enough. The entire output is even. Or if any one of the term, at least one, that's a condition. If at least one of the term in the product is even, other terms doesn't matter whether even or odd, the entire output is going to be even. Okay, I'll give a simple example for that. Let's say if you're multiplying 2 with x, y, z. It's a simple example to understand the concept. X, Y, Z are different integers. We don't know whether X, Y, Z are, whether they are odd or even. But that doesn't matter. As long as you are multiplying or one of the term in the product is even, that means the entire output or the entire product is always going to be even. So X, Y, Z, that doesn't matter here. Whether it's odd or even, since you have a 2 here, that's enough we can 100% confirm that the entire product will or is going to be even. Similarly, we can see we can recognize another pattern here that is only way to get an odd output. Only way to get an odd, odd output is all the terms here should be odd. That's only way to get an odd result. Right? If you're multiplying only all the terms are odd, that's the only way you get an odd result. Okay, these rules are very important. Similarly, there are also few rules that you need to know about addition as well as subtraction. Okay, let's say if you're adding two even terms, the result is always going to be even. Similarly, let's say if you're adding two odd terms, you can take an example, one plus three. One is an odd number, three is an odd number. Adding them, you'll get an even result. Let's say if you're adding one odd number, and another even number, the result is also going to be odd. These are the rules that you need to know. And if you analyze here as well, you can see a recognize a pattern. If you're adding like terms, like terms in the sense, both the terms are even or both the terms are odd. That's called like terms. If you're adding like terms, see, both of them are even or both of them are odd, the output is even. So like terms, if you add or subtract, addition and subtraction, the same rules you can apply. So like terms, if you add or subtract, the result is always even. Okay, keep in mind. Similarly, unlike terms, unlike in the sense one of the term is odd, other one is even. They are not, see they are unlike terms. When you add or subtract, the result is always odd. You can remember this so that you don't need to uh, plug in some values to find out the result. If you remember this uh, uh, the results, it's very easy to apply in the questions, okay? So this is the concept that you need to know. So let's start by applying this in this uh, question, approach number one, okay, applying the concept. So let's start with the statement one. See, statement one, you can see that you have uh, P minus R, the whole square, you're multiplying by Q. Q, I know it's an odd number, then you're multiplying by S, 
which we know it's given. See, R and S are even. So I know that this term is even. See, you can use the same concept you learned right now, right? If you're taking a product, one of the term is even, definitely the entire output or the entire product is even. You don't need to check whether this is odd or even or whether Q, we know that it's odd, that doesn't matter. As long as one of the term is even, the entire result is even. So I can clearly say that statement one is actually true, is always true. Okay. So let's analyze statement two here. So you have uh, Q minus S, it's multiplied by Q square multiplied by S. Again, same logic. See, you have one even term here. In the product so definitely the output is even you don't need to think twice you can directly mark it statement 2 is also correct okay so definitely 1 and 2 are correct so you can eliminate the uh, options at this stage option B gone option C gone so your answer is going to be either A or D so you need to definitely check the third statement as well okay so let's analyze third statement so you have uh, Q plus R the old square multiplied by p plus s we need to check whether this is going to be odd or not okay so here uh, let's use uh, the the rules of addition uh, here so q is a uh, odd number r is even so you're adding one odd and even so unlike terms you're adding here squaring it then you're multiplying by p which is odd and s is even again unlike terms you can use the same rule unlike terms if you add it the result is odd okay you are taking you have an odd number you are squaring it again you multiply by again you have unlike terms sum of unlike terms is always going to be odd so you have odd square which is odd square means what odd number you multiply by itself right so definitely it is odd so this is going to be odd number again you multiply by another odd number definitely the result is going to be odd so clearly we can say statement 3 is also correct. The result is always going to be odd. So as per the question, all the three statements are actually true. So option D is the right answer. Option D is the right answer for this particular question. Okay. So this is approach number one where we applied the concepts we learned about odd even properties. Let's try approach number two. We are plugging in values for these variables based on the conditions given. Okay, so P and Q are odd numbers. So P is 5, Q I am putting it as 3 or 1, it's up to you. Then you have R and S are even numbers, R is 4, S is equal to 2. Okay, I'm just plugging in uh, the numbers as per the question. Now, what I need to do is I need to plug in these in the statements given and check which one of the following are correct okay let's start with statement one p minus r p minus r is five minus four which is one square multiplied by q which is three multiplied by s which is two okay so definitely this is even you don't need to find the entire product because i know it's a multiple of two that's enough to confirm that this is going to be even okay statement one is uh, correct let's start with statement two Q minus S, 3 minus 2 is again 1 times uh, Q square, which is uh, Q is 3, 3 square multiplied by S, which is 2. Again, this is going to be even because it's a multiple of 2. That's enough. It's an even number. Now let's try statement 3. Q plus R, Q is uh, 3, R is 4, so 3 plus 4 is 7 square multiplied by P plus S is uh, 5 plus 2, which is again 7, which is going to be 7 cube. That means you're multiplying 7 by itself three times. See, odd, odd, odd. So definitely you don't need to find what is 7 cube here, okay? So if you know it's good, but still we know that it's going to be odd number, okay? That's enough to uh, figure out statement 2 is also correct. So again, we got the same answer. Option D is the right answer. All the statements here given statement 1, two and three, all three of them are correct. Option D is the right answer. So as I said, this is an easily doable question and um, you could use approach number one or two in this question to get to the answer.